Good morning, Grade Sixes, and welcome to Worksheet Cloud, Grade Six Natural Sciences. If you have a question during the lesson, send an email with your question to grade six at worksheetcloud.com. My name is Mrs. Hall, and I look forward to teaching you about your solar system, Grade Sixes, and today we are going to take a closer look at the inner planets. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. So the objectives of today's lesson is to look at the formation of our solar system. We're going to take a close look at the inner planets. We're going to look at Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. And then I just have a little quiz just to keep you on your toes and to make sure that you've been listening carefully. So before we start, I want to give you a video or show you a video on the formation of the planet. So let's start the video and you can, we'll carry on after that. Orbiting around our sun, we find asteroids, comets and planets with their moons. But how did our solar system form? Around 4.5 billion years ago, a cloud of mostly hydrogen gas and dust started to collapse onto itself. It spun faster and faster, flattening out to form a disk with a dense center. This center got so hot, it started making light and our sun was born. Around our baby sun, there was still a spinning disk of gas and dust. Over time, it cooled and came together due to magnetism and gravity. Close to the sun, metals and rocks began to form, but it was still too hot for other materials to become solid. They remained as gases. Further from the sun, where it was cooler, water and other ices could form. They came together to make larger pieces, called planetesimals, which then joined to make large planets. These planets had enough gravity to capture the surrounding gas and became the gas giants, Jupiter and Saturn. Some scientists think Jupiter formed first and was pulled in towards the sun by the swirling material in the inner disk. When Saturn formed, it moved inwards too. The planets got closer and swept up the gas between them. They then began to journey outwards together. Jupiter's large size stopped rocky material clumping together. The asteroid belt is full of these rocky scraps of the solar system. It might also explain why Mars is smaller than expected. When Jupiter moved inwards, it fed on lots of material, so later Mars had less to form from. In the inner solar system, chunks of metal and rock slowly came together to create the rocky planets. Within 100 million years, early planets were orbiting the Sun with lots of leftover material in between. The young Sun had a phase of releasing strong winds. It blew the extra gas outwards, stopping the rocky planets and early gas giants from growing. The outwards moving gas was pulled in around the snowball cores of the ice giants Uranus and Neptune in the outer solar system. Many of the leftover ice balls flew out into the spherical Oort cloud. They occasionally got flung inwards becoming comets and collided with the rocky planets. Perhaps comets brought ices and gases back to these planets, providing material for their atmospheres and also bringing water to the Earth. For the first billion years, many stray pieces of rock and ice would have been flying around, creating lots of collisions. The Earth's moon could be the result of a large object impacting the Earth. Similar impacts may have reversed Venus's spin and knocked Uranus onto its side. Some of the planetesimals still floating around were captured by the giant planets to form moons around them. Scientists are looking to distant stars with exoplanets to see how they form. Maybe then we'll know if we truly live on a unique planet in a very special solar system. So, 
Let's get started with the inner planets and what they are. So, the four planets closest to the Sun are known as the inner planets, and that is Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. The four inner planets share several features. Astronomers call them the terrestrial planets because they have solid rocky surfaces, roughly similar to desert and mountainous areas on the Earth. Terrestrial planets are Earth-like planets made up of rocks or metals with a very hard surface. Terrestrial planets also have a molten heavy metal core few moons and topological features such as valleys, volcanoes and craters. During the formation of the solar system, there, there were more likely more terrestrial planetoids, but they either merged with others or were destroyed. So here we have a picture of Mercury. This picture of Mercury was made by joining many smaller photos taken by the Marina 10. Um, no photos were taken of the area that looks smooth. So that area over there, no photos were taken, unfortunately. So let's take a closer look at Mercury. Mercury is the closest planet to the Sun. It is a small planet, a little bigger than Earth's moon. Mercury is covered with thousands of dents, and the dents are shaped like bowls and are called craters. Craters were made when meteorites crashed into Mercury's surface a long time ago. Let's take a closer look now at Venus. So Venus is the second planet from the Sun. It is about the same size as Earth, but Venus turns in the opposite direction. Like Mercury, Venus is very hot and very dry. But unlike Mercury, Venus has an atmosphere made of thick, swirling clouds. I now have another recording for you on Venus, so enjoy Grade Sixes. Recently, astronomers have built up a detailed picture of Venus's atmosphere. Imagine a probe hurtling toward the planet. What would it see? 50 miles above the surface, it hits a thick layer of cloud. But this is no ordinary cloud. It's made of vaporized acid, corrosive enough to burn through steel. Scientists believe that the acid clouds are a byproduct of Venus's violent history. Gigantic volcanic eruptions blasted billions of tons of sulfur high into the atmosphere. There, it mixed with water vapor to form concentrated sulfuric acid. As the probe breaks through the upper atmosphere, it slows to make a low pass over the surface. The terrain is dominated by dormant volcanoes that tower three miles into the atmosphere. Deep channels forged a million years ago by molten lava stretched thousands of miles, one longer even than the River Nile. Probe sensors reveal an atmospheric pressure 90 times greater than on Earth, large enough to crush a car. But the biggest problem is temperature. The atmosphere is nearly all carbon dioxide. Just like on Earth, this gas acts like a pane of glass in a greenhouse letting the light through, but not the heat out. On Earth, increased carbon dioxide levels are causing small rises in temperature, but on Venus, they have pushed the temperature to over 900 degrees Fahrenheit. So 
So let's take a look at the difference now between Mercury and Venus. And in front of you, I've got some fact sheets, okay? So I'm not going to read through them all with you, but just take note of things that interest you. The distance from the sun, um, the diameter, the length of the day as measured in Earth time. For example, on Mercury, it's 59 days, whereas on Venus, it is 243 days. And remember, it spins backwards. The length of a year is me um, as measured in Earth time. In Mercury, it's 88 days, whereas in Venus, it is 225 days. Also very interesting is the average surface temperature. So on Mercury, our average uh, sur um, surface temperature is 117 degrees Celsius, whereas on Venus, it is 464 degrees Celsius. And both Mercury and Venus don't have moons. Okay, so just by studying that fact sheet, using this um, chart, what is one reason people cannot live on Mercury or Venus? Okay, I think we covered that. It has a lot to do with the surface temperature. Both way too hot for us to live on. Okay, another question to consider using um, the fact sheet is how much longer is Venus's Earth year? So you would go to the Earth year, over here, and here's Mercury, and here's Venus, and you should be able to get your answer. It is 137 years longer. Okay, so how much longer is Venus's Earth year? So let's take a look at Earth, the planet that we live on and the planet we know. So Earth, our home, is the third planet from the sun. It is also the solar system's largest rocky planet. Earth is the only planet that has liquid water on its surface. In fact, most of Earth's surface is covered with water. Earth is the only planet in the solar system known to support life. So here's Earth's moon, and we did quite an in-depth lesson earlier um, this week on the moon, so you know all the facts about that. But a bit of recap, moons are satellites of planets. A satellite is an object that orbits another object in space. Just as planets revolve around the sun because of gravity, moons revolve around planets. Earth has one large moon, and the diameter of the moon is about one-fourth the diameter of Earth. Now let's take a closer look at Mars. So Mars is the fourth planet from the Sun. The rocks and soil that cover much of Mars contain the mineral iron oxide. The mineral is reddish-brown in color. It is the same material that makes up rust. Interesting. This has given Mars its nickname, the Red Planets. So let's take a closer look now using the charts or fact sheets on Earth facts and Mars facts. Okay, so again, the average distance from the Sun for Earth, the average distance from the Sun for Mars. The diameters. The length of day as measured in Earth time is 24 hours. We all know that on Earth. And the length of day as measured in Earth time is 24.6 hours on Mars. The length of year as measured in Earth time is 365 days on Earth. But on Mars, it is 687 days. The average surface temperature on Earth is 15 degrees Celsius. And on Mars, minus 63 degrees Celsius. We have one moon, whereas Mars has two. Now, if I've gone through that too quickly, please feel free to just pause me and study the actual fact sheet. Right, a couple of questions for you. How long is one year on Mars? So look at the fact sheet and see if you can come up with the answer. Correct, 687 days. Why is the average surface temperature considerably lower on Mars compared to Earth? 
So look at the average surface temperature here and the average surface temperature there and think about it by using this fact sheet. Okay, why is it lower on Mars compared to Earth? I'll give you a little hint. Look at the top of the fact sheet. Look at the distance from the sun. And that's exactly it, grade sixes. It is further from the sun. So we have our four inner planets, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. Okay. Let's take a look at who was listening and paying attention. Let's see how good you are at locating the correct planet. So, the planet, this planet, has an atmosphere made of thick, swirling clouds. Is it Earth? Is it Venus? Or is it Mars? I'm going to go with Venus. And yes, I was correct. <laughs> Let's take a look at this one. This planet is closest to the sun. Is it Mercury? Is it Earth? Is it Mars? Which one is it? Make your decision quickly before I click. I'm going to go with Mercury. Yep, correct. The fourth planet from the sun. So, is it Mercury, Venus? Oh, we don't have Mercury as an off, off, um, option here. We've got Earth, Venus, and Mars. So, fourth planet from the sun. I would go with Mars. Did you see me working that out in my head quickly? You see, even teachers have to work things out. And the largest of the inner planets, okay, from the four planets we've learned about today, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars, which would you say is the largest of the inner planets? It would go, I think I'm going to go with Earth. Let's see if I'm correct. Mm, not too shabby, Mrs. Hall. Not too shabby. I must admit, I was quite nervous answering some of those questions. And then grade sixes, just to end off um, with a little bit of humor, how do you organize a space party? You plan it. <laughs> Love that. Anyway, tomorrow, grade sixes, um, sorry, not tomorrow, but the, um, I think it's Wednesday I'll see you again. Um, I will bring you all the information you need on the outer planets. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned something new. Take care, have a good afternoon, and don't forget to download, download the homework sheets. And just remember, not everything's always covered in the homework sheets, so you might have to wait for a lesson, another lesson before you can answer them all. Right. Thanks for watching.